Okay, welcome to Interactive Friction. This is a new show done by me and my friend Sam from the Texture Pop. Oh, I'm sure you know him. I'm the host. I'm also the player of the game right now. Yeah, because I don't have a good laptop to play this game. Or good internet. Or anything. Really, yeah. <laughs> really, this would be the worst cheap. possible option. I, I'm cheap. So yeah, obviously it falls to Sam the Man Callahan to do this. That's right. So uh, we guess... are playing Far Cry Four, obviously. Yep. New Far Cry. The in the, uh, all the threes there are clearly indicated to Far Cry Four. I mean, those are fours, as far as I can tell. Obviously. So uh, I guess we should point out that uh, I guess I'm pretty sure this is your idea, and. Basically, it just comes down to instead of just doing a regular let's play of like, oh, we haven't played this game, let's you know play it and talk over it. This is we've both played this game. I played this game two or three times. You recently finished it. Yeah. And we're gonna spoil the shit out basically, of everything constantly. Basically, I want to bitch about Far Cry Three, and Sam wants to kind of watch me bitch about Far Cry Three. I don't mind playing through Far Cry Three again. So this is the result of us coming together for this. So, yeah, just as a actual formal warning, this is not a regular Let's Play. We're going to talk about the end of the game at the beginning of the game or anywhere else. You know, we will talk about what we bound. want about the game when we want. So we choose Master, worse than Malaria. Uh, I'm just going to go with Survivor because I don't want to die. And I'm going to let Sam make all the gameplay decisions because uh, backseat gaming is very annoying. <laughs> Except when I want to make this. Like Except when scene. I want to. I mean, the only problem, the other problem is that you have like a five second delay. Yes. So we got this great Lewis Carroll quote. Nobody. Another moment down, Alice went after it, never once considering how... Wait, why? There's subtitles for the text on screen. <laughs> I know! Fuck. A lot of games do that, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. I don't know. Maybe I it's guess like probably because that, that font... Can, probably because the font can be kind of hard to read. Yeah, it's probably for like people who need subtitles who have... Who are like legally blind or something might be able to read that. So you get to listen to this great MIA song that's gonna copyright strike the hell out of this series. Here, here is the collection of douchebags. It's douchebag and douchebag and douchebag. Jace Douche and his douchey friends. <laughs> that was Jason Dillweed. Either one will work. I mean, like, I love this DJ because he's just got like a shirt that says Wub Wub, and I'm like, yeah, I would not hang out with the DJ with a shirt named Wub Wub. No, no one also, had a decent shirt name. Also, supposed to be dating... Uh... Fuck, what's her name? Elisa? Lisa? Lisa. Is that supposed to be your I girlfriend? I believe, your yeah, girlfriend? Jason and Lisa are boyfriend and girlfriend at the start of the game. Okay. I couldn't remember, like, the first time I played Which this, I didn't know if she was dating Grant. Which is why she's more the other survivors. Right. Well, I didn't know if she was, like, dating Grant at the beginning when I first played And, of that. course... Fucking... The, the villain in the game. Fucking Voss is the best. He makes this entire game. Without Voss, he is the like only reason fun... this plot. Yeah, he is where the game starts and ends. He he he's good, and then once he dies, the the game is bad. It's, it's the thing though. It's like if Voss wasn't in this, it'd be a fun sandbox, but the story would be absolutely trash. With Voss, the story is worth playing through up until he dies, and then it's like yeah, yeah you might as well just finish it. But fuck it, it's so boring after that. <laughs> yes. God, this guy just. Gives it his all. I cannot remember his name. I looked up the voice actor the other day. Look at me. Uh, Look me in the but he just yeah. sells it the whole time. He's really good. You're my bitch. I rule this and if, uh, fun fact, which I believe you told me this, and many people have told me this, that the uh, character for Boss is actually modeled after the voice actor because he did such a great job. So yeah. They actually look alike. And uh, there's actually a. a there's actually a YouTube series called The Far Cry Experience that Ubisoft made in which uh, a reporter goes to the island because Ubisoft's using the, because Ubisoft's sending in there to promote Far Cry 3. Yeah. And uh, the actor actually physically dresses up as Voss and plays yeah. as Voss in, in the, uh, I seen the, in the YouTube series. I've seen the that came out of that. There was a first photo where they reenacted the cover of the game. With, uh, real it's actually there. hilarious. I believe it. You're a okay brother. We're gonna have a lot of fun together. Just, it's, he's well animated as well. He's just a great character, great character going on. 
I just hope that you two pieces of fox are more entertaining than your friends. So, uh, we've been captured. Yep. What the hell is Grant's shirt say? Cut back? Cut track? I don't, I don't care. It's a douche shirt. I, I love how he's only in in the game for like a couple minutes at the most, but, but Grant is already much more interesting than Jason. <laughs> well, he's like, he's in the game purely to die, to give you an emotional reason to move on. Even like, though he by doesn't all even rights, teach you how to shoot, game, or anything. He, he should be the protagonist of this game by all rights. Yeah, but the funny thing is that, like, being that he's in the army and all that, you figure they'd be like, alright, he's gonna teach you how to shoot the gun and all that. It's like, no, he just walks around for you and then he gets shot. How? And that's the beginning and the end of the game. What? Uh, and they both yep. have tribal tattoos because they fucking suck. Yeah, because they're that kind of douchebag. <laughs> Also, I love how. I mean, the not all people with tribal tattoos are douchebags, but a lot of them are. I also love that in Far Cry 3 and 4, all the enemies wear red. It's just like, yeah, yeah they're wearing red, so of course. It's like the All the pirates wear one. red, and all the, and all the mercenaries later in the game wear, I think, yellow. Yellow, yellow and black. And blue. They wear some blue as well. Uh, in Far Cry 4, it's yellow and red. Because it's the golden path. <laughs> of course. Uh, and this, uh, it, it, and of course, your brother is obviously so much, much more smarter than uh, than Jason. So, of course, he's the one that gets the idea to break out of the obviously evil jail so, of evil. Hopefully, during these first few episodes, there won't be much screen tearing. Now, to be fair to Jason, in this scene, he's acting the way I would likely act if I was being, if I was in this situation. I would be scared out of my mind, just cussing the whole time. You wouldn't just be pissing yourself inside that cage constantly. I think that'd be my first. Well, no, reaction. I probably have already had. I probably would have already emptied my bladder at that point. <laughs> this, is no, this is no time left to piss. We have to move on. All right, detection yeah. meter. It's I don't know. I'm trying to remember. Like, if I remember correctly from this game, they're not as fucking blind as the Uruks from Shadow of Mordor. Which are probably the ultimate no, of I can't they see actually shit do have some decent some decent uh, cones of vision. I wonder if the harder difficulties game. extend the vision. Like I know that it like fills up faster, but I wonder if it actually gives them further line of sight. That'd be interesting. That's a good question. I don't honestly know. Also that tutorial thing is popping up, but I know how to play the game. I played it. And so uh, there's actually some good like setup here when you just look around the environment, you see like all this luggage here. It's just like all these people's belongings stacked up. Like, you know, these guys have definitely done this before. Yeah. So why do you need a camera? Lighter, I get it. Tablet with GPS. You need a DSLR to keep track of your enemies, obviously. <laughs> you have like the tablet for a GPS, and then you also pick up a paper map. It's like, alright, that's weird. And then you have the walkie talkie, sure. And then a fucking DSLR camera. I don't uh, know. Yeah, I can see uses of everything, especially the map, but not the DSLR camera. You really only need that to be if you be a tourist. Yeah, you're not just gonna go on a tour. Like, I, maybe he foresaw getting evidence of this crime. Although, it seems like everyone knows that this is the Slaver Island. You should not come here except for these guys. Uh, so. Yeah, like I. I don't understand why the fuck these people came here. Like, you figured there'd be a series of reports saying, like, all oh, these people who took these child islands all mysteriously fucking never returned. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. There, there's it's, a it's lot of luggage in this game. Like, they must have been. This is honestly the worst. This is the worst kept secret in the entire world. You'd think by, by now they'd be dropping nuclear bombs in this place just to stop them from kidnapping more people. Oh, it's so fucking weird. Like, that's also like a horror movie trope and such, or like thriller trope. And, like, what's this island if people are killing all these people? It's like, wouldn't, he, wouldn't they know about that? Wouldn't the airliner be like, Oh, and for the record, viewers, if you don't like me bitching about this game, stop watching right now. It's, just, it's gonna get worse from here. It's gonna get so much worse from here. Or rather, just play the game first so you understand. Because I like this game a lot. It's one of my favorite games of 2012, but man, it's Oh, it's fun problems. to play, don't get me wrong. It's it's super fun to play. It's just the writers clearly are really bad at their job. Either that or they were rushed, which I'm actually tempted to believe the latter. Yeah, it's Ubisoft. Knowing Ubisoft. It doesn't matter. They're both acceptable pronunciations of that. Of that. Company name. Let's go. 
You have to get past him. Bro, throw you a rock. Smoke some weed? You want to shove some weed up your butt? I almost want. I, I wonder sometimes whether or not it's just you pick up a rock from the ground and throw it, or if he just has like a collection of rocks in his pocket and used just for throwing it at walls. Yeah, when to I, scratch when I first played this game, because you could do it off roofs and stuff, I always imagine he had a pouch of small rocks that he'd just refill <laughs> walking around. Of course, that also that also explains the qu asks why you saw fit to bring a bag of small rocks with you to the island. Maybe he collected the bag, but the question is where to get it out of the cage. I don't know, unless you want to say he got the bag after he wakes up later with Dennis, in which case this plot's we're thinking way too hard about this fucking plot. And the mechanics of rock throwing. I mean, yeah. What's this moment remind me of? Yeah, I think it reminds me of all Gilead from Call of Duty 4 a little bit. Because that's like the best shooter stealth section in gaming. Back in the trenches. Well, that was Call of Duty 4, that was uh, Modern Warfare. You ever play Call of Duty 4? I played the, the, mo I played the original Modern Warfare, yes, but I, I stopped playing Call of Duty after that. Yeah, well, it's that mission where you're in ghillie suits in Chernobyl. Oh man, it's been forever, oh yeah, oh yeah. But it's been forever since I played that game. Oh, Grant, no! Oh, why'd you have to get shot in the neck? Oh, maybe I should hold the button down to save you. Oh, maybe I should let go, though. Maybe I should hold down the button. Oh, well, I'm really far behind. Oh, maybe I should just... I'm just gonna let go. I don't want to hold his neck, it's gross. Oh god, it's so gross. <laughs> I, I think the first time this happened, it was a little bit powerful, but being that I already watched it's like you're doing. It's like you're doing neck compressions. I just, it looks weird. Like you're trying to do CPR, but those on the wrong part of the body. I feel like there should be like more blood. And then he's all like, run, Forrest, run! And of course, that's a very boss thing to say. <laughs> Also, be the kind of person to watch Forrest, Forrest Gump and be like, "Yeah, I should quote this sometime." What a great quote to steal! I'm gonna say this just in case someone kid, someone I kidnapped, <laughs> escaped from my. Right home. <laughs> I always wanted to say, "Run, Forrest, run!" And again, this is actually for a tutorial. It's not bad. It, it's one of the better although, ones in shooter history. Out of yeah. the millions that came out. It's just, like, it, it uh, suffers from the very problematic trope that Tomb Raider also had, which is someone who doesn't know how to shoot something or how to It's into the action weapons. really, really quickly. Yeah. Which, you know, uh, I believe you've brought up at one point or another that the problem basically just comes down to players don't want to be bored. Yeah. Like I said, during the focus testing in the Tomb Raider, in the Tomb Raider, originally they were going to give you the gun, they were not going to give you bullets for like an hour or so after you got the gun. But when the players got the gun in the focus testing, they were like, I have a gun, why can't I use it? So they, they made you, to they gave you that kill real quick after you got the gun. For that reason. Fucking suck. Like, every time a like, new game comes out and it has, like, this weird mechanic or something like that, it's always like, whoa, it came down to the focus testers. Like, well, get fucking I mean, this is how testers. Overdrive became Fuse. God, fuck. Oh, I, saw, I, mean. I saw a copy of that game at GameStop for like 15 bucks, and I was like, if it was 5 bucks, I'd get it. That game makes me feel sad. Just the idea that Insomniac had like this crazy shooter, and they were like, no, nope, it's more Call of Duty. Oh, and, and of course it was published by EA. Yeah. And then Insomniac, who did they start uh -oh. with now? Microsoft? Yeah, Microsoft EA? sounds like Overdrive. Yeah, because they wanted to break like Sony. Oh, look, it's Baby's first kill. Oh, look how behind you are. I'm on the part where the fucking bridge collapses. Oh, I'm getting to the part where I actually start crossing the bridge. I love how they really don't focus a whole lot on the fact that that was their very first kill, when in real life, for someone like Jason Dillweed or a typical normal human being, your first kill will be traumatic as fuck. I don't think he had, I think in his defense, he doesn't have time to be dramatic about it. Yeah, it's like you stop running after him. But I mean, after like once you reach Dennis, that's the point where you start processing everything, and that's when things will start. You start getting re really yeah. upset. I would I would almost say that maybe this could have had like a short nightmare sequence between you falling through the river and waking up with Dennis, where it just kind of like replays all that. Oh, very quickly. Dennis. We want to talk about Dennis. Oh, Dennis. Let's talk about Dennis. You have the right to take my life. Well, no, I wasn't. But know that I will also <laughs> take yours. Scottish Dennis. Oh, oh God! This How many times have you seen this cutscene now? Like eight times. 
Oh, yeah. For those of you who aren't aware, which would be all of you, we did like a test run before we started the series, and we went through this scene at least eight different times. Each time we had something to say about it, it do it's the it's the gift that keeps on fucking giving. <laughs> I'm gonna have to post that video before this because it's just too great. It's basically, oh hey, I found you. I nursed you back to health. By the way, you're a warrior now. Gonna put a tattoo on your ass. Here's a knife and a, and money to buy a gun. Hey, kill those guys for me, please. It is like in his eyes, it's just like well, you want to save your friends, so I might as well make you a warrior. But it's like you never asked him for that. And that all happens in the span of like five and like one minute. I never asked for this, Jason you have says. Right to take my life. <laughs> but no, I will also. Yours. I, will also I mean, and, and, and Jason just kind of goes with it, and it's kind of like, I would have tons of questions if someone kid, if someone did that to me and just put a tattoo on my arm like that. I would like, have hey, tons of questions. why did you put the tattoo on me? What the fuck does it do? Oh, it lets you level up. Okay, thanks. Gives you fucking supernatural powers. And you get a machete, of course, because... I just love that he's like, I, I know who you are, Jason. You're a warrior. Because so I guess all Shooter Titans need some sort of melee weapon. Uh, it's fucking Listen, Dennis is, might be the worst part of this game. I need to find <laughs> oh, oh no, I think it gets worse from here. I don't know, Hoyt's pretty bad, but Dennis is fucking sucks. So you'll help. I was like, thinking about Citra. I don't know, Citra is just too going to fucking out there to be bad for me. Psychopathic? Yeah, but like in terms of like effect on the plot and the characters, it's like Citra's whole thing is just like, look at how sexy I am. You're gonna and of course a tattoo obviously is just a benign thing that that douchebags get on their arms. A tatao, that's mystical. So does Dennis have tribal tattoos or tribal tatows? Yes. <laughs> yes. So he has. Didn't they also explain later he used to be in the army and that's why he has the army shirt? It's a sign that the battle I think that was the thing he said. Yeah, I think he, like, he was a, a someone from a different nation in the U.S. who joined the U.S. Army to get citizenship, and then when he got be, actually became a citizen, he hated the way his bosses treated him, so he eventually found this island and became an asshole. <laughs> I decided to become an asshole on this island. <laughs> well, I mean, apparently the island turns everyone that goes there into an asshole unless you're... you're a screaming dillweed. In which case, you might also be an asshole anyway, so who knows? Like, you either, like this asshole turns you either into a, this asshole turns you either into an asshole or a blubbering idiot. Which you will see with the other kidnapped victims. What do they say in America? So he's at that part where he's like, yeah, you, I'll give you the money for the gun, it's America, you're gonna shoot someone, right? Yeah, and I love that you can buy a pistol for sixty dollars. <laughs> what a great market! It's like it, it's like I could just like literally just get off a shift, take that paycheck, and then go buy a pistol. Follow me, my friend. And then she's like, "Go get the radio towers unlocked," and I'm like, "I'm on it. I get the weapons for free, right?" And I, yeah, I remember early on, I, I was trying, I was gonna buy the bow, and then I said, "Oh, well, you can just." Two more rare towers to get the bow. I'm like, okay, why would I ever buy a bow then? If I could just get them. Hey. Far Cry 4 is the same problem where it's like, look at all these crazy weapons. It's like, why would I buy any of them? They all unlock later. Yeah, I would get them all for free later and I can send the money to buy attachments and shit for them. And I bought, um, I think I only bought one weapon ahead of time in Far Cry 4, and that was like a uh, single shot rifle. <laughs> and that was it. Follow Dennis out of the village. I'm out of the and this is where we introduce the game to the game Assassin's Creed elements. Oh, this is weird playing with the controller. I'm playing. Fun fact: I'm playing this with an Xbox One controller, so it's extra weird. I mean, if you're comfortable with it, you can just go to keyboard and mouse instead. If you're more comfortable with that, I don't know. I just figured I'd play with the controller to see how it plays like that. that must be I the played the game time. originally with a keyboard and mouse. But uh, at some point on the podcast, we'll have to discuss controllers. But I really like the sticks on the Xbox One, and most people seem to hate them. Because they are super loose, like way more loose than the PS3 controller sticks were. Alright, so we're gonna find this tower. And I think, uh. End of the tower is gonna be in a part one for us. Yeah, that was thinking the same thing. I was looking at the, at the uh, stopwatch. This might be a good time to call when we finish this tower. Yeah, which is obviously, it's a simple tower because this is the purpose of the mechanic itself. 
and not to actually like challenge you. It's just to say, oh yeah, this is how you get weapons is by climbing towers. Yeah, later on they get kind of crazy, and in Far Cry 4 they get really fucking nuts. At some point. Yeah, they get. They, although none none of them are like something that you can't figure out by just taking a minute and looking at at the tower. They're all yeah. very simple to figure out. The, the tricky parts are some are just trying to trying to land some of those jumps. Yeah, some of them in four, you actually can't enter from and the you tower know, base. Like you have to go through the underground you know, tunnel. You know, first person platforming aside from Mirror's Edge has rarely ever been good. Yeah. Luckily, it's pretty confined. Like Mirror's Edge game. is the only game that did good first person platforming, in my honest opinion. <laughs> well, it's the only one that was built for it. Yeah. And there have been other like, like indie this... games like it that I've played. One They're Sick. basically adapting FPS mechanics to jumping on platforms, which is not a good idea, generally speaking, because they're not designed to, to do platforms, they're designed to shoot things. So how'd you feel about those flyovers when you lock towers? Because I found them completely useless and I wish I could skip them. You mean this cutscene right here? Yeah. yeah. I don't mind them. I like that you need to have some sort of reward for the towers, like some sort of nice ride, proof huh? that you did it correctly. Yeah. But oh god, Andrew, they did take, the take a bit something. too long. Why is like, if they just did like this, the typical Assassin's Creed viewpoint, pan around, it you probably wouldn't have been as big a uh, big problem as you're having. But I didn't actually mind it at all. Yeah, I didn't like it. Shops. Adventures. All right, so we got a new gun for your stores, and uh, I think they'll do it for part one. The shopkeepers are from the outside. Yeah. Once Dennis finished explaining this bullshit about shops and shit. Uh, oh, in the next issue, which. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, we gotta go hunt more. Look at the map. Yep, select a waypoint. Alright, Dennis, get me the fuck out of here. I wanna shoot you now. Yep. Society has taught you how to fail. Oh, Dennis, please here. shut up. Now, if you want to save your friends, you must Dennis, I don't want to save my friends, I want to save my game. Act on instinct, so go there and, and get me some shit that you think might be useful, and I'll determine about what good a warrior you are. What, you mean to pick the purple plant? What the fuck, Jason? You're not a warrior. I, I love this mission. It's literally, it's literally in, in game, it's just, hey, you're a warrior now. Go find some shit you think might be useful. And Jason instinctively knows what is useful and what's not, because, of course, this tattoo is magic. Fuck you, Dennis. Or some, shit, or some sort of shit. Alright. Tune in next time for the next video. Work on your shooting. Save my game. Great. Episode 1, work on your shooting. <laughs>